1 Corinthians 11th chapter, verses 23 and 34, the Lord's Supper, we're going to be talking about the Lord's Supper. Uh, remember when we come to the Lord's table today, we look back to remember what Jesus has done. We look inside to see what we need to do, and we look outward to what we can do for the Lord Jesus Christ. We want to remember that uh, before we do the Lord's Supper, we need to self-examine ourselves. We need to look inside ourselves and self-examine. Uh, is there something standing in the way? Uh, is there a sin that was unconfessed? Is there something that's not allowing us to uh, participate this morning? But, you know, I'm going to start out right here first off. We as Baptists love to eat. Amen? All right. I'm telling you what, we love food for baptisms, ordinations, festivals, and revivals. You name function, and we bring the food. We love to bring the food. And I tell you what, I love being a Baptist for one of the reasons right there is because, you know what? Baptist women can really cook. I mean to tell you. Uh, man, uh, the food is just fantastic. But one of the most important meals that we take is not all about food. It's not about food at all, but about faith. About faith. It is clear representation of what close fellowship and relationship we should have with Jesus Christ, the Lord's Supper. And at each table uh, that in front of here, you can't see it now because it's covered up with a cloth, but it says, do this in remembrance of me. <clears throat> do this in remembrance of me. Me being the Lord Jesus Christ and what he had done for us. So important that we never forget that. That was one of the reasons that I'm so cautious about doing the Lord's Supper is for the simple fact is that I don't want it to become just, oh well, we're going to have the Lord's Supper, no big deal. You know, it's just tradition. You know, uh, we forget the, the awesomeness of what it represents. So uh, with that in mind, as I go through this sermon, I want you to kind of do that spiritual self-inventory uh, this morning. Think about that. Is there something that I need to confess to the Lord? Is there something I need to ask for forgiveness from somebody else that I might have wronged? You know, uh, man, it's a... Every day we go through life, we make mistakes. But the Lord Jesus Christ is there and it says if we can just humble ourselves and pray, He will heal our land. He will heal from heaven and heal our land. Don't we need that in America today or in the world today? Amen? Amen. All right. And by the way, hello all you folks out there on the internet. I forgot to get to say good morning to you. Thank you for being here with us this morning. Uh, I'm sorry you can't, won't be able to participate in the Lord's Supper with us, but uh, you'll be there in spirit. All right, let me turn this page here if I can. Today we practice two of the ordinances that are given to the church by Jesus Christ. Baptism is where those who have acknowledged their sin and confessed Jesus Christ as Savior in the only way to God the Father in heaven identify with his death, burial, and resurrection. The Lord's Supper is a way of remembering his death and resurrection and anticipating his return to claim his church. Praise God for that. And you know what? He is coming back. You all aware of that, right? I mean, you all know that? He's coming back again. And when he comes back again, he's not coming back as a baby. He's coming back as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I'm telling you what, Lord Jesus, come back soon. Please, come back soon. But he's, uh, you heard me say that many times that Jesus came as a savior. And the second time he's returning, he's coming back as a sovereign. He's coming back as a king. He's going to be a ruler. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm looking for that day when he returns. In the Lord's Supper, remember Jesus is our savior. We regard ourselves in light of his atoning death and resurrection. We represent him as people who trust, obey, and tell others about our great salvation as we long for his soon return. And I pray that it is soon. Number one is we remember our Savior. And that's in 1 Corinthians 11, 
23 to 25, and I'll read that now. And it says, For I received from the Lord that which I have also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given uh, thanks, he broke it and he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken uh, for you. For this do in remembrance of me. And in verse 25, and it says, And in the same manner as he took the cup after supper, saying, This is the cup of my new covenant, of my blood. And to do this, uh, this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So the elements, what they call the elements, the, the cracker that we have and the grape juice that we have, is the do in remembrance. It represents Jesus' body and his blood. And you know what? By taking that, we are to, going to just say, I acknowledge Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I acknowledge him as my, as we studied in the Sunday school this morning, as our, my good shepherd. He is my shepherd and watches over me. And so we need to watch and, and make sure that we recognize that today in the Lord's Supper as we take it. Uh, I just pray, folks, that you, you, the seriousness of, of this uh, is, is just awesome. It's just so awesome. I, it's hard to find words sometimes when, it, when, when you want to talk about it. It's just amazing. But when we remember our Savior, we're looking back. We're looking back. We remember His death. That awful death that, that, that price He paid on the cross. He didn't have to go because He was not a sinner. He was not a sinner, but He took on the sins of the whole world when He was on that cross. It was so bad that God, His Father, could not look upon Him. He had to darken it. He darkened the skies, you know, and because He just couldn't look on Him. Oh, man. Can you picture it? Dad's, Dad's in here, out here this morning. Can you picture that when you think about your own sons, if you have a son, and you just couldn't look upon Him. You just couldn't, no, I can't, I can't look on Him because He's sinned now. Wouldn't that be a heartbreaker? Huh? Wouldn't that be a heartbreaker? Instead of running up there and hugging your son and telling him how much you love him? And that, no, you couldn't even look at him. Well, call, uh, we don't even call it death anymore, though. We call it, he's going to pass on, right? He's going to pass on. Sounds like he's driving down the interstate. But uh, he's going to die. He's going to die. What is that? No saying stone, stone cold graveyard dead, something like that. That's what Jesus was. He had died, and we call it, you know, according to First Peter two twenty four and Isaiah fifty three six, he died for our sins. Amen. And it does not matter if you live a sinless life if you did not die an atoning sacrificial death. We could not have forgiveness. Because we know that none of us live a sinless life. Amen. None of us. He paid the penalty for our sins. The soul of sins it should die. Ezekiel 18:20. Uh, and if we live 10,000 lifetimes, we could not pay our own sin debt. 10,000 lifetimes. It's not that the simple remembering of facts about Jesus. We come to the table today in fellowship with the reality of His presence. Because I'll tell you what, the Bible says, where two or more are gathered, there I am also. He's here today with us. Because we truly are gathered in His name. In His name. Well, uh, the Holy Spirit gives witness to our spirit, and we rejoice in the fellowship we have in and through Jesus Christ. We remember His resurrection. His resurrection is a seal of approval that death is defeated and sin no longer controls us. Folks, if he did not raise from the dead, I uh, come out of that tomb, we might all well go fishing today because there would be no hope for us whatsoever. But he fulfilled that prophecy of coming out of that tomb on the third day after dying on the cross. The resurrection yelled, Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. In this we have hope. We see our loved ones long dead. One day, we're going to be up with them in, in heaven. Huh? If they're a Christian, we'll see them in heaven. If they're not, then I'm sorry, you won't be seeing them again. So that's why it's so important that we tell our family members that are not saved, we tell our friends that are not saved, hey, you need to get saved. 
You need to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. But this is a purpose for living and a greater purpose for dying. If Jesus did not die, rose, and, and left the first time, we would not be sealed with the Holy Spirit. After we look back and remember his death and resurrection, it's time to look forward now. We've looked backwards, now it's time to look forward. And it says, in remembering and reflecting our Jesus' death and resurrection, we should be overjoyed and look forward to his returning. Y'all looking forward to Jesus coming back again? Hallelujah. All right, y'all, you ready? Are you ready for when he comes back again? Are you just saying, oh gosh, I hope it isn't today? You know, it's a football game. I'll wait football season's over with. Yeah. There's a baseball game coming up or something, you know, something important today. You know, Mama's fixing a great meal today. We're going to have a wonderful dinner. I'll tell you what, it's going to be nothing like that dinner you're going to have at the Merry Supper of the Lamb up in heaven. When we all gather around that big, I imagine how big that table's going to be. Huh? Oh, I'm telling you what. I said, please pass the biscuits. <laughs> it's going to be a long time wait, maybe. I'll, maybe they'll have a bunch of them set all around the table. I'm sure God's got it all figured out. Uh, but all through the Bible, there's a yearning expectation for the return of Jesus. It's the best scene in the last book of the Bible. And the Apostle John calls for the return of Jesus. And you know what he said? Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians 11, 26 says this. Uh, let me find it. Oh, boy. Good old wise. And it says, 1126, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. You proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Yes, we all observe the ordinance until he comes. He is a longing, a longing in his spirit for your service, your Savior to come. Is there, you ever think about that? You ever think about what you talk about? Uh, when you kind of contemplating about Jesus Christ and say, man, I just can't wait for him to come. I watch that eastern sky and I'm waiting for it to split wide open. Now my, my, uh, my brother-in-law, Miles, he, he said, I hate these days, these bluebird sky days, not a cloud in the sky. He said, I want clouds in there. He said, I want the Lord to come back soon. I think we all should be in agreement on that. Amen? Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, that's going to be wonderful. Wonderful. Can you just imagine when he comes back to and he calls us up in the air with him in 1 Thessalonians, I think it is where he talks about the rapture of the church, when we're going to be called up and be with him forever? Not just for a little while, not for even a lifetime, but for eternity. Eternity. That's a long time. That's a long time. Uh, you try to think about that, and I use the example always of my little grand, my uh, oldest granddaughter, uh, when she was little. She says, "Papa, I love you this much," and to her, that was a long time. I mean, that was bunches to her, you know. But think about eternity. My arms aren't long enough to reach out there anymore, you know. I could never could reach that anyway. Anyway, all right. But even so, come Lord Jesus. This bread and juice uh, cause us to look forward to the great banquet hall of heaven. We will one day be united with Christ forever. We will have much to celebrate and much to look forward to. Wow. I get excited just thinking about it. You know, I really do. Get excited to think about that. When Jesus comes and takes us home. When we shed this old world. You know, and, and don't have no more suffering, no more crying, no more hurt, no more pain. You know, we were talking this morning about when you get my age, you know, getting down is not a problem. Getting up is. You have to plan that. That's got to be a planned strategy maneuver. You know, put one leg up first, then reach to grab something and hope it holds. Y'all, you folks are laughing out there now. I know you are. Come on now. You're going to face this one day if you're, happy, if you're lucky. But do you want to know why our country is embroiled in financial crisis? And how many of the representatives, the Democrat or Republican, or whatever party have called for Americans to pray and ask God for forgiveness? None. 
It is greed that has brought us to this place. It is forgetting that God, the God who made America great, we are Christians needed to be take this to heart. It is all too easy to forget the mighty hand of God and look to the measly hand of government. What is their purpose, proposal to take care of the problem? The check. <coughs> Throw more money at it. It might help. But remember what our help comes from, that it comes from the Lord. We come, our help comes from the Lord, not from the government. We have a chance to remember Christ by praying for our leaders, by praying and asking God who will want to in the White House, and who do you want representing us? I'll tell you right now, the thing I tell every time at elections, I'm not going to tell you how to vote, who to vote for, but I will tell you this, pray about it. Pray about it before you vote. Read the Bible. What does God's Word say? Look at this, look at the person's history. How they lived. Are they Christians? Pray about it. We regard ourselves, number two, we regard ourselves in the light of Jesus. 1 Corinthians 27 to 28. And it says, if I can find it here. Remember, I think I might need more light up here. 27. Therefore, whoever eats this bread and drinks this cup in the Lord for an unworthy matter who will, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup, for the, he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Okay, uh, and then verses uh, 31 to 32, and it says, if, but if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, and let him come uh, together for the judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. So Paul's taking this pretty serious. Paul's taking the Lord's Supper very serious, as we should be taking it very serious. Paul says that it's not take partake of the Lord's Supper in a non-worthy manner. And that's what I mentioned with the very onset of this. That we need to take and make sure and examine ourselves. Pray about it. Ask him. God, is there anything, anything standing in the way between you and me? Is there anything, God, that I need to think about, that I need to ask for forgiveness? Help me, Lord, please. The only way we can take part in the Lord's Supper is if you have, uh, uh, have uh, confessed your sins and accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. However, Paul is calling on us to examine ourselves as Christians, as followers of Christ. The Christian uh, Corinthians were not very good at self-examination. You ever do, uh, you've heard me mention many times in here before about self-examining yourself. Look at your spiritual, where are you at on the spiritual scale of 1 to 10? Where are you at on that? You know, are, are you confessing your sins? Are you reading your Bibles? Do you have a good, strong prayer life? What's going on in your life between you and God? You need to examine that once in a while because we need to know well, my gosh, what have I done? I didn't confess that. I just came to mind. We need to understand that we, we need to do what God wants us to do. Okay? 1 Corinthians one twenty seven says, uh, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which will, uh, are strong. We should regard ourselves rightly. That involves regarding ourselves as a child of a king, saved by grace, kept by mercy, and sent on a mission. Sent on a mission. How many times can I say that? You're on a mission as a Christian. You're not a pew setter. You're to be a warrior for Christ. All right, number three. We represent our Savior in 1 Corinthians 11, 26, which I already read. If you got your Bibles there, look at it and read it over again. But what a reminder for us to represent Jesus to the world around us. How are you representing Jesus, our Savior and Lord? How are you, what kind of, when people look at you in this world today, what are they seeing? What are they looking at? Huh? Are they seeing a Christian? Are they seeing someone that's different from the world? Or do you blend in so well that they can't, you're like wearing camouflage. They just don't even realize, hey, that person, even if a Christian, he goes to church. Huh? Asking you. 
Think about it. Do we appear, appear united? The picture of the broken body of Jesus still reminds us of, that we are a body. We represent him and until he comes again. Okay. Do we appear concerned? Do we as a church who believe in the return of Jesus Christ have the concern we need for those lost without Christ? Are you willing to talk to somebody about Jesus or are you going to keep it a secret? Oh, Jesus, I know you couldn't save that person anyway. Look how bad he is. I remember one time with my brother-in-law uh, and I said, Lord God, he's just too bad to save. So don't, God, I don't want to have you wasting your time, Father. Just don't, don't worry about him. Well, God showed me and taught me a great lesson. Miles got saved. Miles attended the seminary in New Orleans. Miles became a pastor. <laughs> God, what a lesson you taught me. Don't ever tell God you can't do something. Because he's God. He can save you or anybody. You know, what a lesson. What a lesson. Well, do we appear uh, prepared? Are we prepared for the Lord to use us? I don't mean prepared for a business standpoint. Something I have learned in, in my ministry is that you don't have to be organized for God to use you. You have to be available. Amen. You have to be available. Do we appear loving or loved? Remember the words of Jesus, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Also from the abundance of the heart, the life is patterned. How do we appear is often how we are, how people appear, they see us. That's the way we, sometimes we are. Okay? Remember, as we come to the Lord's table today, we look back to remember that Jesus has done. We look inside to see what we need to do. We look outward to see what we can do for the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bow with me, please. Father God, as we can now come to the time to, to celebrate the Lord's Supper, Father, I just ask God that uh, we just uh, look in, Father. Is there anything, anything, Father, that we need to confess? Is there anything that we need to improve on? Lord God, thank you. Thank you for what you're going to do here today. Of course, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Jason, could I have you and her come up? familiar with the way we serve the Lord's Supper here now. It's all contained. The bread on the top and we'll take that first and then the uh, grape juice is underneath that. So please be careful with it. Don't spill it on yourself.
try to get your tracker on here. I'm not sure how to do this. We'll give you 30 minutes to do it. In the same manner, he took the cup that after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. about afterwards they sang a hymn. So this will be our dismissal. If you're capable to please stand as we sing one verse of Blessed Be the Time.